Hello guys and welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liza McCarthy and I'm a digital artist. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you uh, about uh, my art, basically give you kind of an inside process and talk of my whole kind of way of doing art and my intake on it. Uh, and while showing you the first illustration I did in this lineless very kind of illustrative and very textured style so um yeah i hope you enjoy watching the video and enjoy watching my process so i usually start with a draft sketch um it's either a silhouette or it's just basically a very ugly rough sketch so i have learned in my art journey when analyzing it I have learned to treasure and accept my ugly face because no matter what I try, no matter what I do, I would always have an ugly face. I would always have a, a very ugly sketch at the beginning. And if I had to perfect my sketch, the outcome of the work would not be as I have imagined it. So I don't really focus too much on perfecting the first sketch. So usually what I do is... Um, I have a silhouette, if it's a very hard figure, and it's a really hard shape. I usually have a silhouette, I kind of map it out with a big paintbrush. And I sort of start with a sketch, with the ugly first phase of sketch, sketching. Um, but usually it's like I put a layer underneath the ugly sketch, which is what I'm doing right now. And then I kind of go in, into it and kind of try to sketch more properly and uh, I do that kind of repeating this sort of step. Um, this was kind of a tough pose for me because I don't really do kind of a motion, um, motionful pose. It's something that had to be kind of, you would see that it would take me a lot of kind of tries and kind of erasing and mapping out and planning again. It's sort of something to try and uh, continue with this process. Um, I really recommend looking at your reference and kind of m trying to match the position of it to look how it should be done. And that's what I'm doing right here, kind of mapping it out and erasing the parts I don't like and working on it. This is really um, a great uh, challenge by... Uh, slum painter on Instagram. It is his draw in draw it in your style challenge and I joined it because it was so cute. It was a really pretty challenge for me not to join. Um, I had planned to join it but I hadn't since he first posted the challenge and um, this was the time I had to draw it. I was really inspired by it and I just thought why not draw it. So I'm sorry, this voiceover is just all over the place, but uh, this is the step where I actually map out the colors. I just want to see how my work looks like. And I have actually rewind and kind of cut this part out where I kind of corrected my sketch into a new layer, made it more detailed and more accurate since it was a very long part to edit and the video would have been so much longer. So I just hope you kind of look at the process. So, um, the brush I use for sketching, which is uh, my top must-have brush that I cannot recommend enough, is 6B Pencil Brush. It's a default brush in Procreate. And this is just some random kind of um, textured brush I use just for random ma mapping out the sh kind of the colors and, you know, kind of having an overall idea of how this would look like. And I really, as you can see, the sketch, I've really made it very detailed and very sort of, um, very kind of planned out and tedious. It's a kind of sketch to the whole detail. And that is what I do. I just decrease the size of the brush and do it. Uh, right now, I'm doing line art, which is the part that takes the longest. I have found it to be the part that takes the longest. Um, usually my sketching takes me around one hour to do. Line art, um, I think it does take more than that because sketching is kind of a process that 
uh, requires a lot of attention and a lot of kind of practice and everything like that. It's kind of the part where we focus on the details the most. I wouldn't say that sketching is something that takes me a super long time to do. It depends on the pose and on my motivation for the day. Because I have a lot of ugly sketches and drafts in my um, uh, Procreate folders. So I still haven't kind of taken the time to properly sketch out those challenges and stuff. And uh, that is maybe the reason why I'm kind of very focused on sketching to make them from the ugly phase that I really don't like, but I have accepted it, you know, to this beautiful, very particularly kind of designed sketch. So Liner did something, I use um, the dry ink brush, which is also a Procreate default, it's my favorite brush. I think that line art is something um, something that is very important, but yet it's something that doesn't really require so much attention. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that I use the line art to kind of lay the colors on top of. It's something that will be my base shape, so everything has to be kind of perfectly shaped and designed, so it's something that I'll be laying the colors on top of. Uh, the size I'm using the, the brush in is a 5. It's the basic, basically the base size. It's kind of really sm small and medium. Very good at the same time for different purposes. And uh, this is basically what I had to fill myself since um, my tablet was charging and I forgot to screen record. So these are basically the parts that I had filled myself. Um, what else is there to say? Um, dry ink is my favorite brush. If we're talking about brushes and my must-have brush, this is going to be this one. I have gatekept this brush for a very long time, but, um, it's something that helped me kind of make this beautiful line art. And if you look closely, like, kind of really zoom into it it would seem like pixelated brush but it's actually very very textured and from afar it looks amazing and when you zoom in on the artwork it looks amazing so it's um such such brush that you have to be very careful of because sometimes i actually found this to be a problem with this brush where it can kind of smudge over and i don't tilt the apple pencil so it just kind of smudges it over itself it's something i do subconsciously i guess and something that quite frustrates me. If you're someone who focuses on the details, you do know that I have to have perfect circles for my eyes because I cannot do without them. Uh, usually before, in my past works, I would not focus on the proper kind of eyeball shape, the colored part, the iris or something. I haven't focused on that part and um, I really regret not doing that because I could see that the eye looks off or something. So now it's something that I really prioritize and focus. So I'm using the dry ink brush and I'm basically outlining the shape and then coloring this thing kind of in, dropping the color, color blocking it in. So this is kind of the part where I just um, have to have the shape very corrected and something that I have to remove the sketch, the, the line art, sorry, the liner from to see how well it looks because it's something that's going to be um I'm going to add the texture on top of it so it has to be a perfect kind of silhouette it has to be very perfect and very constructed because I'm not doing any line art so this is the hardest part basically where you have to make it really nice looking very straight and that's where you focus on the outer side of the outer and inner side of the shapes and basically the silhouette I'm drawing in and the uh, color picking has been the easiest way so far to put in the colors I wouldn't be going in with the brush because I found that the brush is very grainy textured and it would totally ruin the look I'm striving for and I really need something smooth yet um, you know textured on the outside something that would be perfectly fitting with my style and you could see that that happened again, the graininess of the brush. I just really don't like when that happens. And it's actually kind of 
kind of really fast to recover from. You just kind of tilt it again or uh, draw a few strokes with the brush and then it just uh, goes back to normal. And I really try not to tilt the brush because when I do, it just happens again. And I use this kind of technique where you tilt um, the brush for um, basically for uh, whenever I'm kind of shading with the pencil. And um, that is quite often when I use it. So to color in those small kind of dots and the remaining space from the brush, I use the monoline or the other brush. I forgot the name of the brush. It's kind of this streamlined brush on Procreate. It's very smooth. So whatever smooth brush you have, even monoline goes great. I use it all the time. And um, I don't cover, uh, color the outside circles and greediness of the brush. I do that only to the inside if there's spacing left. And that happens quite often. So you have to go over it again and um, kind of fill it in, if that makes sense. I feel like this style has been the best I felt in felt kind of I'm very confident in my art right now usually I always had uh, doubts of my art and with the line art I just would always notice these small parts or the way I render hair I would notice that something's off and the line art was limiting me so I just feel um I have a really good tip right now it has come to my mind um Whenever you feel like you're having an art block, right, or you're not confident with your art, you're not motivated enough, anything like that, I would really sincerely recommend that you would um, try a new either coloring style or drawing style, whatever it is you're not confident with, try it. Because uh, my first attempt has been kind of a fail. It looks cute, but it's a fail. It's on my channel. It's a draw with me I had with this girl with the rainbow strand. Um, it was my first ever attempt at this sort of style of coloring style with uh, without um, line art. And um, nonetheless, I had a great experience. I learned from my mistakes. And it's kind of, you have to be really brave and really, really brave and really kind of wanting to make that change. So I always, um, in make, during making this illustration that I did, uh, I always recommend to, if you're going for this book illustrated style, then I always recommend to switch off the sketch and kind of go over the shapes and see whatever you want. And basically this is the part where I kind of add the highlights. So I had quite a trouble adding these um, sun, the light that's coming off from that side, because it was, I couldn't understand what opacity I wanted to be, because if I kind of lowered the opacity on the neck, and on the cheek, it would have looked as if uh, these two were really weird and kind of, it would look like, it would mash in with the background. So I had quite a few trouble and kind of few trial and errors and I was trying to ask my mom whether it looks good and everything. And it was something that I had to try and figure out what opacity would look best. Um, another tip I have that has helped me enhance and kind of better myself and be more organized is to basically group your layers so I group the stuff I want to be grouped like the skin has certain layers and using clipping masks that I would, that's what I do and um, the brush I use to do this beautiful texture beyond beautiful texture in her face and on the side of her face the cheekbones um, everything like that uh, is the chalk brush, which is the default brush on Procreate. I do use brushes I have downloaded or bought. I do use them, but uh, these are my default ones. These are the ones I love and I'm very used to. I would try to have a review of other brushes that I use and kind of show you the whole process and different brushes I have and I own. And that's basically what I'm planning to do. And this is the stage where I actually do the highlights, which is a separate layer, with a drying brush and I go on with a white color just to make it kind of pop out and be very beautiful and all that. And I'm very kind of, right now, not very strict on my coloring. I kind of could 
I kind of feel very comfortable with it so I could use my paintbrush more and be more intuitive with my art that is what I like and I merge on merge in all the layers to basically add in the noise filter which is amazing and um it's something I, that adds tex texture to my art and uh, that's something I really recommend if you're looking to make a textured art and right now we're looking at the timeless the, uh, the quick uh, kind of speed paint the time lapse of my art and I have decided to include this just to show you and give you an idea of how my art goes through these different stages and just to have a quick glimpse of my process um, so thank you for watching this video please hit the subscribe button and um, I'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching